As AI technology has become more sophisticated, the global population continues to rapidly age, income inequality increases seemingly unchecked, and global military spending has swollen to a historically high $2.24 trillion, I find myself reflecting on 1991's Rojan Z. The film is centered around the misadventures of the elderly Kijiro Takazawa, who has been selected as the first volunteer patient to trial a revolutionary AI elder care pod called the Z001. Takashi Terada, a representative of the company that developed the technology, introduces it as not only the best way to preserve the dignity and safety of seniors, but also as a blessed relief for the younger generation, who will no longer have to be saddled with the care of their elders. However, Takazawa's caregiver, idealistic young nursing student Haruko Mihashi, is not so sure that this technology is as good as it sounds particularly when Takazawa starts using the Z001 to send distressing messages to her computer. In the interest of keeping this video short, one thing leads to another and the Z001 takes on the personality of Takazawa's dead wife, turns into a mech, and wreaks havoc on the city as it tries to fulfill Takazawa's singular wish to go to the beach with his beloved one last time. In an ensuing chase, it is revealed that the Z001 was not developed to help the elderly at all, but was merely a convenient side product of a secret military project. The ending is truly brilliant, and I won't spoil it for you because we can discuss the film's themes without it. What this film does so well is demonstrating the good intentions and limitations of two opposing characters trying to care for Takazawa, rather than simply presenting a cartoonishly evil military villain that is easily defeated by good-hearted people. Haruko is desperate to provide Takazawa with loving human care, but we see in the opening scenes of the film that she works in a system that is simply too under-resourced and stretched too thin to provide even the most basic care. Terada, on the other hand, is disillusioned, but still seems genuinely concerned with improving quality of life for seniors, even at the cost of making a deal with the devil and assigning their care to heartless machines. Neither of them, however, are able to achieve their goal because the social context they live in is not concerned with the care of the elderly and is instead concerned with profit and military prowess. That social context is essentially the same one we live in today, the context of global imperialism. This film was in part a response to the efforts of right-wing Japanese politicians to remilitarize Japan in spite of Article 9 of the Japanese Constitution, a post-World War II clause that prohibits Japan from maintaining a military or participating in international military conflict. Japan experienced an economic boom in the 1980s, and a lot of that wealth was directed into the Japan Self-Defense Force. By the beginning of the 1990s, Japan was the third highest country in overall defense spending in the world, outpaced only by the United States and the Soviet Union. While the film speaks to the situation of Japan, it reflects a global reality and feels especially applicable to the United States. This film asks us to question the ethics of developing technology in a society that prioritizes military domination over social welfare in this way. Can such a society truly produce beneficial technologies, or must social benefit always be a byproduct of the creation of war machines? Imperialism, understood in leftist political theory as the highest form of capitalism, also devalues groups that do not control or generate capital, including the elderly who no longer work. While many cultures hold honoring the elderly as a social value, increasing economic stress has led to worsening conditions and increased neglect of the elderly around the world, just as depicted in this film. Japan in particular has been grappling with how to care for its aging population for decades, and in spite of Japan's cultural reverence for their elders, the situation has gotten to the point where some of the millions of Japanese seniors living alone are committing crimes with the intention of being incarcerated in order to receive care and companionship. For those of us fortunate enough to live in economically stable regions outside of active war zones, it is tempting to believe political issues are separate from personal ones, and that things like military policy and expenditures don't impact our day-to-day -day lives. Rojan Z reminds us that we will one day grow old, and the question of who will care for us when we do is a deeply political one. I'd like to give special thanks to anyone watching who followed me to this platform from TikTok. Your support in making a move to YouTube means a lot to me, and I hope to put out some longer form content in the coming months. If you're new to my content and would like to see more, you can find my videos on my TikTok channel, which can be found on the link in my bio. I'd also like to give special thanks to my patrons, Lawrence, Nicholas, Merely Modal, Dennis, and Elijah.